our Easter slate. I don't know what you guys have on Easter. I got a little bit of ham going, some scallop potatoes. You're not going to know what this is, but we eat something where Zook and I are from called kibasi. So while you're having your kibasi, you sit around, you watch some XFL action. It's not Turkey Day football. This is different. We got football on Easter now, folks. Second straight week, the odds makers totally whiffed on this Houston spread. We had St. Louis, a seven-point favorite against Vegas. Who's better, Vegas or San Antonio? Well, we saw last week, clearly St. Louis better than Houston, but five, and it opened at four. I don't know. Last week, Houston, a three-and-a-half-point favorite against St. Louis. Who was a better team than that? This week, less than a touchdown favorite against what I think is the league's worst team. I cannot figure out what they're doing with Houston. The odds makers have whiffed on some totals with Houston, now whiffing on the spreads. Is it Paxton Lynch? Would this line be 10 and a half if not for the savior for the Brahmas? Bringing in Paxton. Could he save the season? Save the complete collapse? Not this week, because I don't think he's even going to be active. We got Jack Cohn off the injury report. He hasn't started since, I think, this game you're seeing here. (laughs) Back in week three, he was dealing with a busted ankle. He was benched. He was sidelined for a bit with an injury. Um, Hines Ward has tried. Reed Sennett broke his foot. Jawan Pass held his own but couldn't manage to score an offensive touchdown against Arlington. Did win. Kurt Bankert, offensive line can't hold up for him. He breaks his ribs. Done for the season. So who do you get this week? Jack Cohn, Jawan Pass, Paxton Lynch. Could realistically start all three of them. Maybe you play all three of them. I don't know. And I, I don't care really who it is, because this offense stinks. It, I don't know how else to put it. The offensive coordinator has been a run game coordinator in the past. He was promoted to the OC position. He only had 30 yards on the ground last week. They're dead last in the XFL in rushing less than 75 yards per game. They did lose their bell cow in Kalen Balage, But Jacquez Patrick is a pretty solid back, just no offensive line to run behind, and and they've been ravaged by injuries, right? We understand that, but the good teams like D.C. early in the season kind of fight those injuries off and just survive. The Brahmas have kind of let it cripple them. Um, They have managed to score more points offensively than the Renegades, and kind of knowing what San Antonio's M.O. is, right? They score first. Six of their first seven games here in the season, they have scored first, including this um, last matchup with Houston, they took a 6-0 lead. So do you take a live betting angle here? Well, first of all, if you're going to bet a game live, make sure you're on the right channel uh, because if you were watching ABC last week, you got 15 minutes of pickleball that would have limited your options on live betting. So make sure you're watching the game if you want to live bet. Maybe San Antonio scores first and you're able to jump on Houston at a 2 or a 3 instead of a 4. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe an angle you can take. Um, so the, the number opens Monday, I'm going to lay the four with Houston. I jumped on it immediately and I usually don't give out best bets Monday, but I definitely told you guys jump on this number on Monday. It's now up to five. I think it'll close at five and a half or six. It's like taking candy from a baby here. You have an angry, frustrated Houston defense. They just got lit up in back to back to back weeks by the league's three best offenses. And look at the last meeting that we just showed you. In that game, Jack Cohn, 8 for 20, 64 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. So you better believe that Wade Phillips and Brian Stewart are telling their guys, we're better than this. We should not be 4-3. and three. We should not have lost three straight games. They're going to take all the anger out on San Antonio, who is not as good of a team. Tim Ward still not practicing for Houston. He's missed two games now with that shoulder. And they're missing him dearly. 19 team sacks the first six weeks with Tim Ward in there. Five of those were from him. He now joins Tevante Beckett, Kerry Vincent, starters that are being held out of practice this week due to injuries. So Houston, still tough. Sean Davis, another one who's now out for the year. He was banged up, and and now they're going to shut him down. It's another leader. But I think Houston has enough depth in this Phillips 3-4 defense to be able to get the job done. And, and um, they've really been trying to bounce back the last three weeks, and it just hasn't worked out for them. But 
like I said, the aggression has been built and built, and now it's going to get unleashed on San Antonio. Looking at the other side of this matchup, right? A big question mark, Houston offense, San Antonio defense. Who is A.J. Smith going with that quarterback? You have Brandon Silvers back in practice. He's been banged up with an elbow, did not play well against D.C. Cole McDonald got the keys to the offense with Silvers on the sideline. <sighs> did not look ready. And, and Cole McDonald struggling pretty badly against a really good St. Louis pass defense. They have another quarterback, Caleb Ellaby. He hasn't played all season. Doesn't really look like he will. Um, we did talk about the Roughnecks being without some of their best defensive players. But what I've begun to notice is this John Trey Kirkland loss was bigger than I thought it would be. Look at the Houston receivers. They have good talent. Burnett Harris, Cedric Bird had a big game and seven catches for 50 yards last week. But man, John Trey Kirkland being out, it's similar to Quentin Dormady coming in for Orlando. He goes 3-0. and John Trey Kirkland leaves. Houston's 0-3. Kind of the, the heartbeat of that, of that Houston offense. They were having a lot of fun with them. Um, does it have more to do with the gauntlet schedule they faced, or are they really missing Kirkland that bad? Well, got to get your new additions involved. Ja'Cory Roberson, you bring him in. He hasn't been active the last two weeks. Not sure what's going on there. Michael Bandy stepped in and played right away. He got his first catch as a Houston Roughneck last week. Um, so I don't know. McDonald or Silvers, we'll kind of address this later in the show. We had a listener send in a question about what the status of Brandon Silvers might be. Again, we do know he's practicing, so that would tell me he'll probably start because uh, Cole McDonald did not impress me. Maybe he'll slide back into that kind of run-only deal. Got to rely on your stars, though. Deontay Burnett has been solid. I think that regardless of how many points the Houston offense like is able to put up, I think you can put up 24 and win this game. In fact, it's going to be like a 24 to 6, 24 to 8 type of deal for me. Houston is the pick. Houston will cover. This is a very, very short number. In fact, I would have made this number eight and a half. Zook, who are we going with here for you between the two Texas squads and a rematch? Well, this is clear cut. Yeah. Um, we're definitely taking Houston. I want to, I want to touch what you're talking about with Cole McDonald. I know me and you had a conversation separately about this. Yeah. I hate judging a guy that just gets his first start off his first week. Yeah. He only got one week. Right. Uh, first team reps. That's right. I'd like to see him. I just don't think you judge him until the second or third week and see mm -hmm. where he's at. Uh, Silver's is like we talked about. You know I don't like him. So. Mm -hmm. uh, there's they're gonna outscore. Maybe a combination of both. The Brahmas, no matter what. So. Right. Maybe you, you put McDonald as a starter, and if he continues to have struggles, because, again, that St. Louis pass defense, they got some dogs. Sure. And that was really tough for Cole McDonald to play against them in his first start. San Antonio, we saw Jalen McClendon shred them last week. Like, has this defense taken a step back? Houston looked great with Cole McDonald against D.C. It looked like they were about to come back and win the game if he, if he had a couple more minutes. So, I don't know. I, I'm kind of... I came into the season thinking Cole McDonald would eventually take the job. It sort of happened, but now do you see Silvers reemerge? I don't know. Houston is a team in desperate need of a win, and A.J. Smith will do whatever it takes. Well, I think A.J. Smith needs to take off the sunglasses. <laughs> buckle up. Yeah. Stop being so cool. Yeah. And coach the game. You heard it here first <laughs> from Chris Zuck Sorry. calling out. Calling out AJ Smith, but it is it is my best bet this week. Foreshadowing that, uh, I don't know. Just I don't know what I'm missing here. I think San Antonio is just in a terrible spot in their season, going on their fifth quarterback now. That just been ravaged by injuries. It, it's just it's just miserable right now in San Antonio. And I don't know, Zook. Even with this one being in the Alamo Dome, you got to compete with Easter. A lot of people are with their families for that holiday, and. The Brahmas, I think, kind of hit their ceiling attendance-wise. They come out week one. They had, what, 25K? The next time they were home, it fell to, like, I think 16 or 17. So how much of a crowd do you bring out here? Maybe the Brahmas fans will wake up because it's Houston. It's a division rival. You have a, a similar chance to get revenge when they were stuffed four times on the goal line. Mikey Manziel taking Houston as well. That's how you know it's... A no-brainer because even Mikey agrees with us. So. Yeah, someone who's trusted the Brahmas a lot more, and now you know he's out of the Kurt Bankert phase where Kurt Bankert was going to come in and, and lead the Brahmas to a three and zero finish. Well, right. I feel bad for Bankert. Maybe you know in the last couple of weeks here he could have done something, but they just didn't protect him and he broke his ribs. And 
I fear that could happen again with Paxton Lynch, just not able to get the same five guys, and it's just not a good offensive scheme.